I'm all righty hello everyone so it's now streaming on Facebook good we're live on Facebook and we are so excited to have Melissa Griffith with us from the D Gary Young Young Living Foundation and we are just so happy to have her here and I think she has some special news for us that we don't even know so <laughs> we will we will um, let her get to it and just are so grateful for everything that the foundation does and for changing people changing the world one person at a time is is what they do and, and that's that's the way all good things happen is one one on one so Melissa it's all yours well, thank you, Kathleen. And hello, everyone. It is my honor and joy to be here presenting about the foundation today. Um, a little bit of history about me. I have been with Young Living, specifically the foundation, for a little over three and a half years and pinch myself every day. I, I absolutely can't believe that this is what we get to do. We get to work with incredible brand partners like yourselves and um, connect with members all over the world and figuring out ways that they can make an indent within their own little corner of the world. So absolutely honored to be here with you. Um, I do have a PowerPoint that I will share really quickly. Can you see the PowerPoint okay? Yes. Okay. Just one more minute. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm just going to start with our, uh, our origin story. Um, before we dive in a little bit about the Young Living Foundation and our new mission that was released last year at convention, I want to take a step back and reflect on where we started, what our roots are. Um, back in 2009, Gary Young was in Ecuador creating what is now La Finca and Distillery. And uh, he was driving there every day and he would uh, turn around this, this just disheveled building. And he started seeing that there was a lot of kids of a variety of ages coming in and out of that building at all hours of the day. And Gary, being the curious man that he was, stopped one day and he's like, I'm going to go in there and I want to see what's going on. When he walked in the door, he saw something like 50 students of a variety of ages learning. They were getting an education. This was them attending school. There was one teacher who was teaching all the different ages, the same topic. And Gary just knew that he could do something about this. He, 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 was like, what can I do? How can I help the city of Chang'ang? How can we make these people be the best versions of themselves? And that next month he broke land on what is now the Young Living Academy, um, which now has 350 students and has, um, gosh, like six graduating classes so far. Um, it's grades 12 through K and it's just thriving. It's absolutely thriving. You can see here in this picture, um, these are the kids. They are, they're the kindest souls you have ever met. Uh, if you get a chance to go to Platinum Retreat, you actually get to join us at the Young Living Academy and um, experience, experience each one of these. Um, aroma sharing is a perfect example of loving on our academy students. The two students that you all help sponsor um, are at the school because of Gary. And it's just our honor to carry his legacy further and uh, expand from one school to what the foundation has become. Last year at virtual international grand convention, which is wild that it was a year ago, uh, we announced our new mission, which is to protect and empower our world's young. And we do this through three focus areas. Uh, the first focus area is championing education. Um, and what that is, is we, we're, we believe that education is a route to change. We know that when you become educated, when you, when you know better, you can be better. 
as uh, Mia Angelo said. And so we want to figure out a way that we can around the globe in our own communities, um, other countries, make the world better through education. And we do this, as you can see, through opening doors of opportunity through traditional and vocational education, skills building and leadership development. Uh, we do this through funding schools, uh, increasing access to education, uh, leadership development, skills training, and uh, funding higher education. Uh, with the academy specifically, we people were going, the students were going, they were graduating when they were seniors, but because of financial um, inabilities, they didn't have the opportunity to, per, to pursue a higher education. So the foundation saw that as a need and said, you know what, we can help this. We can help, once again, those, those kids become the best version of themselves. And so we created what is now the, uh, the Diggary Young Leadership Fund for Higher Education, where we have 36 students on scholarship who are, ex uh, who are exploring universities around the world. This all happens because of our members, where uh, all, of, all of the money that comes in to the foundation goes directly to helping our members, or I'm sorry, our partners. And it, again, it started with the Academy. <laughs> the next pillar that we have is developing enterprise. This uh, has been, so essentially um, developing enterprise, what our goal is, is we empower women worldwide to break the generational cycle of poverty for their children by investing in small businesses and fair trade enterprises. Uh, what does that mean? We work with artisan groups around the world to help them make a fair wage and uh, connect them with the Young Living Global Marketplace. So Holiday Catalog, we had quite a few items that were handmade items from, um, from our artisans around the world. And you will see this coming Thursday that we actually have five more items that we are launching at this year's International Grand Convention. So be sure the moment that registration, or be sure right when uh, you can go purchase things to go snag yours because they are quantities are uh, quite limited. They are not mass produced. They are handmade by some beautiful artisan women like you can see in this picture. So you'll wanna go on and, and grab those. Um, in addition to these five items, we have, uh, let's see here, we are currently working in, that's not working. Um, we are currently working in 16 different countries. So we have uh, 16 different artisan groups around the world that we are currently partnering with. Um, I can tell you the convention items, these five items alone brought in over 500,000 fair pay hours. And between all of these women in the five different countries, they were caring for an estimated of a nearly 6,000 dependents. So developing enterprises definitely changing the lives of women, moms, um, and kids on the ground. Our third pillar is ending exploitation, where we are committed to protecting the vulnerable from losing their freedoms to abuse and human trafficking. Um, one, of my, one of my many roles at the foundation is to oversee service trips. And on service trips, um, we, we take members who have applied and are accepted and we just show them the work that we get to do. Um, we, whether that is with Soul Hope in Uganda or Hope for Justice in Cambodia, uh, we, we get to see all the work that we're doing. Um, and one of my first trips when I was uh, going to Cambodia was through Hope for Justice. And um, I was getting to know the women, the girls, and uh, very shy, very bashful, definitely a language barrier. But when we were there, uh, the executive director at the time was telling me about a girl. And I was like, she's, she just has this like light and this, this beautiful aura about her um, and I was like, can you tell me her story? And they proceeded to tell me that this little gem was handcuffed to a bed for six months and people just had their way with her time and time again. And when, when the authorities brought her to Hope for Justice, um, she was just broken. She was, she was a shell of a human. She had zero will to live. She didn't she didn't want to go on if this is what her life was. And she didn't know that anything else existed. 
So because of Hope for Justice and their rehabilitation program and their commitment to individual care for every person who comes to Hope for Justice, like I said, this, this girl had a light about her. She had the will to live. She had the will to become her best version of herself that she didn't even know was possible at the time. And so that's one example of thousands upon thousands of girls boys, women that Hope for Justice works with. And that all starts with our ending exploitation pillar. Um, so one of the questions that I get asked the most is, this is incredible. How do we get involved? How do we make a difference? We want to do something. We want to create our own aroma sharing where we could bring people together and um, support the foundation through financial finances or sharing on social media. So um, I put together a couple of slides that can make it very, very simple for us to, um, to get involved with the foundation. First things first, uh, connect with us. We are constantly sharing stories like the story that I just told through um, Facebook and Instagram. Um, even better than written word is videos. We have our own YouTube channel. It's at Young Living Foundation that has tons of videos on them that you can go and you can see and you can share with your teams and just continue to educate about the foundation. The foundation is definitely a differentiator for Young Living. Um, young Living truly cares. Young Living cares to give back to the community and they do so through the foundation. And so if, when you're trying to educate about Young Living, please talk about the foundation. Please show them that this is more than just an oil company. This is a a company that's giving back to communities and giving back to people who need it most. If you want to find out more information about us, please visit our website at younglivingfoundation.org. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always email me directly or you can email our info at younglivingfoundation.org um, email. But most importantly, um, other ways to get involved, please join us at virtual at the at VIGC next week. Um, Jackie Skinner, our executive director, has some very exciting announcements. One that is allowing members to give back to their own communities. And we are so excited about that. We have had so many members come back and say, what are we doing in my backyard? What about this place? What about this country? And we're, we're putting a little bit more um, on our members to help us make those decisions uh, and help us raise funds for it. So be sure to tune into that. Uh, we're also, like I said, releasing five new products with all of the, the profit from those products benefiting uh, the foundation, which 100% of each dollar given goes directly to those in the field. Uh, dollar up or round up your order. If you are on St uh, Scava, you, are, uh, you have the opportunity to donate a dollar per order. Uh, if you're not on there yet, please round up your order. Through roundups, which is literally pennies, we raise almost $100,000 a month, $1.2 million a year from our pennies. Picture what that will be, A, when we do dollar up, and B, if every member who was placing an order just clicked that button to donate $1 or round up their change. And thirdly, shop purposely or purposefully. Um, if you shop Amazon Smile, select the foundation as your beneficiary. Uh, we get probably $7,500 a quarter just by people choosing to shop on Amazon Smile. Purchase One Heart Essential Oil Blend, 35% of that essential oil blend goes to the foundation. And again, tune in next week to find one more special oil that benefits the foundation. Um, and keep an eye out. We are actively trying to figure out ways that we can get more artisan items in front of all of our members. So conventions, uh, different rallies, the spring launch, the beginning of the year launch, definitely always keep an eye out to see what items are being made by these women around the world so we can continue to impact the lives of those that need it most. Uh, with aroma sharing, as most of you know, this, uh, this helps sponsor two students. Uh, let me actually just make sure that I can share my screen. Um, so, we asked Jordan, one of the students, if he would film a video, just a video saying how much he appreciates uh, aroma sharing and Kathleen. And um, I, I received this video the other day and I was like, who wrote this? 
And um, my colleague, Michelle and Chiglema said, oh, we actually just asked the family if they would put together a little video. And this is what him and the family came up with. So I'm excited to share it with you. So let's give a listen. Why is it a blank? Oh, of course this happens, right? Michelle, I think it's because maybe the PowerPoint's not in run, but you're, you've got the picture selected. If you un... Let's try it. Slide there over current slide. That's a good point. Because you're just in, I think you're just in a uh, view mode, aren't you? Yeah, um, I'm in, it's not working. So I will send it to you after if you want to post it on the channel so you can uh, share this video of Jordan. It is a view, it's a beautiful, beautiful video. Look how big he is. is. I, know. I know, he's we so need to tall. Our picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. um, you should be getting a picture very, very soon. We just sent out some, um, all the letters. We sent those out um, today, I believe. So definitely keep an eye out on your, on your, uh, your your mail so you can get a new picture of your student. All righty, wonderful. How old is he now? I wonder. He is. Gosh, he's in tenth grade. So that oh would. My goodness. Yeah, he's like sixteen. Yes. So and and most importantly, uh, we just appreciate everyone who is a vendor who is supporting aroma sharing. Obviously, Kathleen and Sonia, you guys are are showstoppers. Uh, we are, we are always so excited when members come out of, think out of the box and come up with ideas that can raise additional funds and can ignite excitement in the field. And you guys have just done an incredible job with that. So from all of us at the foundation, we appreciate both of you and all of the vendors and everybody who purchased any items to help further our mission at the foundation. Thank you so much. We, we it, it really warms our heart to see this, and I'm so excited to see the video. And yeah, all the vendors who donated um, the the items that we auction off, and it's just amazing. I don't know if you did a check yet, but I think we're doing pretty well, and um, it's just so exciting. It's I think it's really um, the reason aroma sharing is successful. Whenever there is heart behind something, goodness happens. I am 100% convinced about that. Well, wonderful. Well, I appreciate you both so much. Um, and again, if anyone has any questions on the foundation, uh, we're here to support you. We exist because of our members. So please reach out to us. Let us know what we can do to help and let us know um, what questions we can answer for you. All righty, thank you. And we're just, um, I was just gonna tell a quick story if I tell it without crying. Um, our original student, Julio, sorry, I'm already crying. We got when he was nine and we had him for, we got him in 2012. And then in 2019, we got a letter that said, Julio's no longer a student there because he got asked to play professional soccer and he and his family will be moving away from the area. And I thought, could that have ever happened to that little boy in that humble, humble home? Um, he and his sibling and his mother all had cleft palates and, uh, you know, they were repaired and anyways, but could, would he have ever even had that chance had the foundation not been there? I mean, just like, I'm a crier anyway. It's just such a wonderful story. And, and I remember, Michelle, I was in Ecuador in 2008 with Gary when he showed us the school where he watched those kids and their windows were holes in the wall and the floor was dirt. Okay. Yeah. And so we saw where they broke ground before they broke ground. Oh, I love that. That's I love wonderful. That. And in, in 2014, I got to go to the last gold retreat that went to Ecuador. Oh, and so I did get to meet Julio. And oh, so cool. He was just wonderful. That's so. one of my favorite parts of what's now Platinum Retreat is seeing the students meet their sponsors for the first time and like the genuine excitement and pride to show you, this is my school. This is my desk. This is my backpack. Like this is all possible because of the foundation, because of you. And most importantly, the will that they have to to continue to go to school and wake up every day and fight the good fight is it's just an incredible.
incredible program. Incredible. And the clothes they wear and the fact and what they're learning and the parents being involved and they're learning about nature and they're learning about gardening and yes. business and things that matter in life. Definitely. And the, the cool thing about the academy is they're like, okay, we're going to take care of these students, but we're also interested in taking care of the community. So working on figuring out ways that they can do community centers. Um, at Platinum Retreat last year, we actually went to a park and cleaned it and painted a beautiful mural on a wall just to clean up the city of Changgong and make it a good warm home for these 350 students that get to attend the academy. Oh, it's so, so amazing. Wonderful. So does that make everybody want to get to platinum? So you can I sure hope it's so worth it. <laughs> <laughs> that trip alone makes platinum worth it. Yes. So what do you do at, at the at the foundation, Michelle? Um, <laughs> you know, I sometimes call myself Michelle, and it doesn't help that I think like a wonderful Michelle. <laughs> Um, so I am the development director. So I am I am responsible for every revenue stream that comes in through the foundation. Um, but primarily, that means connecting with members um, and figuring out ways that we can think out of the box and instead of saying, "Hey, give me money," do something different to raise awareness, raise money, um, and raise any kind of support that we can to to help further our mission. Well, you can always open up a booth at Aroma Sharing and sell these wares. Next year, fingers crossed, it's in person and we will be there. Oh, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you, Melissa, not Michelle, Melissa, for being <laughs> here. We just appreciate all the work that everyone there does. And I know it just keeps you busy, 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 busy. It does. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Keeps you out of trouble, I hope. Definitely. <laughs> No, but it's just a beautiful work that we're, that we are all working on together. So, yep. All right. Do alone. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you hopefully in person soon. Yes, yes and we look forward to um, any all your new stuff during yeah. convention. So, be we'll be watching. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. Thanks. Bye, bye. Bye.